Hey folks, this is Bardic Dragoon. Welcome back to uh, Dragon Quest 3. So when we last left off, we had uh, made our way into a, the cave, or into a cave. Well, first we made our way to the uh, last town we hadn't uh, traveled to yet, Remolder. And then found Gallon's home. That would eventually be the uh, location of Gallon home. Hmm, it's only town name makes more sense. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Oh, yeah. And, uh, we also traveled to a cave where we managed to find a hero shield. So with the hero shield now in our possession, we're gonna go ahead and make our way to... Well, once we deal with the Skeletons, and probably any something, or probably like two or three other random encounters the game's gonna throw at us, because, you know, it does that. I was kidding, game. We're going to make our way to the tower where Rubis is currently sealed. Because as uh, various town folks have mentioned, Rubis is the one who will be able to give us the Amulet of Heroism, or whatever I forget what it's called. And, sh and it's also in that t same tower where we'll find the Auroral Armor. So, it behooves us to, you know, go and do that. That being said, this is... actually, no. That's right, you guys can revive, so... Probably should focus on you lot. Ah, oh, great. Everybody's hallucinating except, uh, Crystal. Crystal can take care of this thing. Oh, well, Natasha can still, despite being or despite hallucinating, still land a good hit. That works too. There we go. Let's see, John. All right. Now, as for this tower, this tower is. Kind of, but not really complicated. The first thing we, of course, have to do is get past some damage floor, because of course we do. And then, well, we have some treasures up here. Though we uh, don't want to open this, this is going to be a mimic. Actually, mimic might be worth the experience. Ah, Manticore and Hocus Chimera. Also, it just occurred to me, I don't think when we uh, previously ran into a liquid metal slime that I actually explained their stats, I kind of went into a fervor of trying to kill it as quickly as possible, so we'll talk about that first. So, first of all, the actually new enemies here, the Hocus Chimera, or Hocus Chimera, Chimera, I never know. Uh, level 30 enemy, 100 HP, 53 MP, 105 attack power, 80 defense, 150 agility, gives 2,240 experience, 125 gold, and can cast Bounce, Fuddle, and Full Heal. They also have 164 chance of dropping a Madcap, which would be very useful to find for uh, John and Crystal, so hopefully we get to actually get that item. As for the Manticore, they are level 42, 140 HP, 24 MP, 139 attack power, 80 defense, 7, sorry, 70 agility, 2,780 experience, 90 goal, they can cast full heal, could crackle, and to have a 1 in, 100, well, 1 in 128 chance of dropping a shield of shame. Finally, liquid metal slimes. Uh, level 24 enemy, 60, or 6 HP, 255 MP, 55 attack power, 1,023 defense, 150 agility, 40,000 or give 40,200 experience, and 10 gold. They can cast Sizz, and of course, will run away at every possible opportunity. So, with that said, we're going to focus on them first. The experience gains, they've good. Well, so much for that. <laughs> now, that wasn't actually all that, de all that deadly from the way those things sounded. You'd figure they'd be more deadly, eh? And, you know what, we'll fight them back.
<laughs> yeah. They're not, mimics aren't really as much of a threat anymore, so, you know, I mean, ostensibly, you don't really have much reason to fight them, but, you know, it's not a bad idea to, uh, you know, or they're not too terrible to fight. Oh, hello. Yeah, flying flares, don't care. Natasha's got another level up. She's catching up, mostly-ish. Plus five to strength, two to agility, three to resilience, one to wisdom, four to luck. Mm, nice. Hello. Good sir. Think before thou walkest. That is the rule of the fuddling tiles. Thus wilt thou learn to be a hero. Haste befitteth not the great. And yeah, that is... I mean, the dungeon, it's just basic layout, even if it didn't have that going on. It can be a bit complicated. All right. The, well, at least I know that the enemies, when they run away, it's not just the slimes, everything runs away screaming. Uh, but as I was in the midst of saying, the layout and way that this dungeon works is somewhat complicated. Maybe not complicated, the right word. It's not super straightforward. I don't know if it's really on a level to be considered complicated, but it's not straightforward. And the other thing to consider are those tiles there. Those ones in particular are not worth dealing with, because, like, you'll probably just walk yourself off, off the cliff and... That's that. But uh, there are others that are you know more worth that are you kind of need to deal with them. And looks like I'm inevitably going to screw this up. Let's uh, go ahead. Where is safe passage? There we go. See, so when you're standing on these, it changes your controls. So I'm pressing up. That just happened. Uh oh, another mimic. Whatever will we do, guys. Whatever will we do. Ah. Strength ring. Very nice. And a mini metal. Isn't that nifty? But yeah, the secret to these things is, well, I step on this one, I press up, we go to the left. I step on this other one, we press up, we go to the right. The way, the way messing with your controls is the direction that the darkened in portion, or actually, let me point it as battle so I can look at them. Make sure I'm describing it because basically you, the tile is basically pointing one direction or another and when you're on the tile you kind of have to think of your controls being pointed out of direction so yeah the light side of the tile is basically pointing towards turn your control 90 degrees and that's going to be the way to do things so like right now we're on one that the white side is pointing to the right so if we do that and then if I press what would be normally down but now it's the controller rotated is to the right we go to the right Worth knowing in order to uh, make your life through this or dungeon a little bit easier, and it just occurs to me there were more chests on this floor that I forgot about. Alright, so, that one's pointing to the right, so we'll first step on it, turn to the right, boop, boop, boop. Alright, now, this one's also going to the right, so we'll go boop, 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 there we go. Care ring. What is a care ring? Hmm. One moment. Uh. Oh, okay. Changes personality and gives plus fifteen to wisdom. Okay. Ah, seed of life. Button. Three oh nine. Yeah.
Stormlord's sword. Which actually doesn't do us much good, as it's only for, I believe, the hero and warriors can equip it. Uh, yeah, hero and warriors. It's basically the strongest weapon outside of the Sword of Kings. Uh, and it, though the main thing is that it casts Casizzle if used as an item in battle. And actually... One quick thing. I believe the Sword of Kings does something else, does something as well, but I forgot what. Ah, yeah, cast cast swoosh. That's what I thought. Uh, well, not specifically that one. So no, that's not transfer. We'll go ahead and give that to Crystal and get rid of the lightning staff, since that is only sizzle that that one cast. And now she basically has a free casting of Sizzle whenever she wants. Ah, there's another Seed of Life. Wrong button. Two oh two. Yeah, she's still at the lowest. Of course, rather than dealing with those tiles, the ultimate easiest way to deal with the. Uh, Navigation here is just to go. Boop. Though there are later spots where you can't like cheese the tiles like that, so you know learning how they work is uh, beneficial, obviously. All right. Now those stairs are the path forward. That walkway just leads to a big empty room. But if we keep going this direction, there's actually a treasure chest. And actually. Actually, no, no, we don't want to go to this yet, because there's also, it leads to something else that we do need to do in order to get uh, to... Because, as mentioned, there are two things in here. We need to find and set a rescue Rubus. We also need to find the Auroral Armor. And doing those are on somewhat different paths from each other, so... And we're kind of bypassing one of them to kind of shortcut to the other one because there's a treasure on the path of the other one, but we will take care of the one that comes up first first. And that is to come up here. And you notice over pits, there's a treasure chest. So, I hope you learned how to utilize these tiles. Suit of a rural armor. No, the depth. She will now equip on Lyra, and I don't think anyone else can use the spiked armor. Yeah. So throw that into the bag. And then, if we walk off this, we end up in a big empty room, which leads back to where we were. And if we keep going this way, Another mini metal, always nice to find. Actually, we got quite a few of those, don't we? Oh, no. How many mini metals do we have? Might be worth stopping by Alahan. Sure, we can get some more rewards. Uh, 14 mini metals, yeah. We should stop by Alahan. I'm pretty sure there's a reward waiting for us. And not those fake rewards like all those pop up windows keep telling me are waiting for me. Alright, so. We actually want to walk off this cliff here, as that takes us back to floor one, but to a side that we can't actually get to otherwise. Coming through here, we then go this way. Oh, whoops.
And from here, it's a relatively straightforward and short path that we need to take. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. Then we have to go this way. Which leads us to the true top of the tower. And to that statue there. We need to get to that statue. A bit of a walk to get there, though. Uh, let's go with the Manticore first. It seems the healthy option to go with. Of course, with a long walk, there's lots of encounters of- Oh! Alright, well, you guys are some new enemies. Uh, we got Elysium birds and green- or Elysium bird and some green dragons. Nifty! And it occurs to me- well, no, there have been, like, the Boreal Dragon and all that, so we have fought dragons before. But say, this being a Dragon Quest game, there's been a severe lack of dragons. I mean, there still kind of has been, but, you know, less so than I was thinking initially. Anyway, Green Dragons, level 42 enemy, 120 HP, 0 MP, 140 attack power, 75 defense, 62 agility, gives 2,600 experience, 107 gold, they can call, in, or call Elysium Birds in for help, cast Inferno, and uh, cast Inferno, or use Inferno, oh, Infer that's, yeah, that's right, I was thinking Inferno, that's the old translation for whoosh was it Inferno, I was for some reason thinking of that, right, no, Inferno, that's a breath attack. They also have a 1 in 64 chance of dropping a seed of resilience, and have some solid uh, resistances to most magics, uh, but there are some uh, loopholes that you can hopefully exploit if you're trying to kill multiples like we're going to have to do here. As for Elysium Birds, level 32 enemy, 90 HP, 20 MP, 88 attack power, 40 defense, 60 agility, gives 980 experience, 85 gold, and they can act twice per turn and cast multi-heal. They also have a turn-wasting option they can engage in. So, yeah, I guess we're gonna focus on first of all. Oh, there's so much of that bird. Okay, as long as they don't breathe fire, we actually should be pretty good here. Thanks to the HP values, they're not that hard to kill. I'm noticing that Crystal is a bit low on health. Here, Lara stares wonderingly at the statue. It's a stunningly lifelike depiction of the goddess. What we actually need to do here is play the fairy flute. I think it had this fancy of effect in the version I played growing up, but, you know, graphics advanced, things like that happen. And behold! Can it be? Has the curse been lifted at last? Thank you, Lyra. Thank you a thousand times over. I am Rubis, mother to the land of Alephgard. And in recognition of the great service you have done me, I hereby bestow upon you the sacred amulet. This gift I give to you will aid you in your struggle against the lord of the underworld. Defeat him, and you shall have my eternal gratitude. For I am Rubis, mother of Alephgard, and I would see peace return to this land. Alright. 
So we have the sacred amulet. So let's uh, go ahead and first thing get the heck out of here. Crystal, get us some evac going. Secondly, Let's zoom, zoom, zoom our way to... Mm, Cantlin's probably going to be our best bet. And you know what? We'll actually take a brief moment to hit the in here. fighting some random encounters along the way, because, yeah, that's the thing. One more. There we go. I feel like in trying to get leveled up for Baramos, I might have made myself overleveled for this section of the game. Well, that, you know, sort of, like, the initially the enemies were a bit tough, but they're starting to become pushovers now. And then again, the high encounter rate, you know, we've been getting a fair amount of levels for everybody. So, yeah. Hmm. Though, honestly, the encounter rate's starting to annoy me as well, so that's a thing. stuff. It's actually just a... The goddess bid thee welcome unto the sanctum, her most hallowed sanctuary. As our, my, dim, as our divine mistress did command, thou hast sought out both rain and sun. Now let the twain meet at last. Brave hero, in the name of Most High, I do hereby bestow upon thee the blessed rainbow drop. All right. And yep, we no longer have the rain staff or the sunstone. We have the rainbow drop. And with the rainbow drop, Seed of Agility. Nifty. Actually, wait. Who needs that Seed of Agility? 
Lyra, apparently. Actually, you know, I should have had Crystal use the... What's it called? Sword. Oh, well. Now yeah, I'll focus on the Mighty Hand. See if they can bring some more Stone Guardian. At least Stone Guardian gives them solid EXP. Yeah, there we go. Cross over here. Living statue, that's kind of underwhelming. Like we're in the territory of the true final boss here. You know, we're approaching their castle and we're dealing with living armors. Okay. critical hits. Okay, now I was going to do a dramatically approach to the front of the castle, but call it a day, because it, it's been a bit of time here, and, well, the final dungeon and final boss are predictably going to be a trial and a half to deal with, so, you know, that's a thing. But, you know, kind of wanted to be a dramatic finish here, because random encounters are kind of ruining all of that, so... And we finish this random encounter, I think we'll call it a day. So yeah, we'll call it a day. I'm, I'm not, I'm done with the dramatic approach thing here. You see the castle up there. You can see where we're heading towards. Tune in next time where, well, we're going to finally push into Zoma's castle. Though I think I might want to catch a few levels. Because just what is in that castle? Let's just say Zoma's not the only uh, big tough dude hanging around in there. And uh, leave it at that.
Anyway, as always, until next time. Later, folks. <laughs>